Hey, welcome to our 2022 Wildwood 171 RBXL. Starting right in the back bumper here. If you just reach in, pull that cap out of there inside of the back bumper, you're gonna find your sewer hose. Take note of those two ears in the adapter here. It's helping hooking up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the bumper back here, just help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things that bit cleaner. Then that cap just presses into place. In this corner, as well as in each corner of the trailer, you're gonna find your stabilizer jacks. What they're gonna do is they're just gonna run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up. And it'll get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you see you got in the unit right now. Keep things firm while you're out camping. Supporting that, you've also got the JT strong arms here. So you get that little key latch there. You're just gonna loosen that off. And that just allows the two tubes to telescope inside of each other. So then once it's down, once you've got that stabilizer jack run down all the way, you can then tighten it back down and that'll just prevent any sort of forward and back movement, just keeping things a little bit firmer for you. Straight up from there, you're gonna find a cable and satellite inlet. So cable on the left, satellite on the right, coax cables just plug in, fire up at their TV locations. And then down again, you get low point drains here. It's basically just that valve would open up, drains out the water system. The purpose of that would be if you're looking to, or if you're gonna be leaving the unit for a while, you just wanna drain all that water out so it doesn't go stale or stagnant. Or if you're getting ready to winterize the unit, you just wanna drain all the water out before pumping antifreeze through. Another step forward and you get your sewer system. So you're gonna kinda of press on that cap and you can untwist it there. There we go. And then you can see it's got the same ears on it that your sewer hose had, so that'll attach the same way where you're just pressing it on, giving it that turn until it clocks in, and that's that. On the left, you get a black valve. On the right, you get a gray, so that gray valve is controlling your gray tank. Gray tank is going to be filled from your sinks as well as your shower. Typically going to be your cleaner water, so we'll dump that last. The black valve on the left here is filled from your toilets. That's, of course, going to be your dirtiest water. We'll dump that first just to help keep that hose as clean as possible once you drain it out with the gray after. Up from there, you get your power inlet. So as you pop that open, you're gonna find a little notch in the bottom corner here. It's gonna line up that notch there. Align those in, press it in together. Give it a little eighth turn to lock it down. Then you get the thread collar in the back there to really lock it in place. Following the cord back, you're gonna find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites will have that. You can plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you've got the power to do so. Kind of right between your axles, we've got your freshwater inlet. So you're just gonna take your water hose and plug it into there. Turn on the water and that just fills up your freshwater tank for you. To the left of that, you get a city water inlet. It's just the same water hose that just plug into there. Turn on the water and that pressurizes the lines throughout the unit. Your freshwater tank drain is just kind of in front of this front wheel here. So you can see that's just draining out right now. Just close off that valve and closes it off. Up from there, you get the exhaust for your furnace. So if you have a running your furnace, you just wanna make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. And then kind of straight up, you get your stove vent. So just that little flap there, you just wanna make sure that's opened up so that your fan inside can evacuate your fumes, your fumes from your stove, because that is of course a propane stove. Towards the front, you get your storage compartment here. So as you open that up, you'll find your water hose and inside of that water hose, you're gonna find your park adapter I was talking about. It's your 30 amp cord into there, 15 to a standard outlet. Down below that is just your other stabilizer jack here. So really the only difference is that your strong arm goes towards the front and center of the unit. So you kinda of gotta reach up there a little bit. Around front and back on the frame there, you get your battery disconnect switch. So with that pointed up, that's it up, That's it there turned on. If you were to turn it fully counterclockwise and pull that key right out of there, that's it disconnected. Your battery itself is housed inside of this box here. As long as you're plugged in for that short cord in the back or your seven pin into your tow vehicle, that battery is charging for you. These two knobs, if we loosen them off, flip up that flap there and you get access to your propane valves. They're both just teed into the same one regulator there. So you're just gonna open up a tank run off of that and once things stop working you just close that off and run off the other while you get the one filled in front you get a power tongue jack so up top's just a little light switch does that light in the bottom and then up is up down is down go on the other side of the unit and get your other end of the storage compartment so that opens on up and you can see it's just straight through to the other side up in top here you get a little bit of storage so that one little kind of manual override right there is for running all of your jt strong arms so you'd run that into the end and you can just kind of twist them up and out and then at the end there, you get your little uh, adapter for running all of your stabilizers. It's just a three quarter inch end. And then this guy right here is your manual override for the tongue jack up front. The door is a dry erase surface. So if you got markers, you can make your notes. Step back and you get your two exterior speakers in between your awning there. Down from there, you're gonna get a cable TV hookup. And below that is a power outlet. So if you're looking to have TV outside, you got the power to do so little storage compartment back here. If you're looking to winterize the unit yourself once it comes time, this little strap there, if you just undo that, well, I guess you can pull up on it first. Undo that and pull it off to the side. You get access to your propane tank valves. So if you're looking to winterize the unit yourself, there's your bypasses. Just lay that back in place and lock it back down with the strap. 
Water tank is of course right below that, so you get that keyway there, you can line that up and you can pop the cover on out of there. All your control, oh, sorry, your electric control is right down in the bottom corner here, so you just turn that switch on, turns it on with electricity. Firing it up with propane, there's a switch inside of the unit. Once we get inside and turn it on with propane, I'll go over a reset procedure and the button that I'll refer to is just right here. And then up top you get your pressure relief valve, so before you ever turn it on with either source, you just want to hit that relief valve to make sure that bit of water comes out. A little bit of water coming out of there is just letting you know that tank is full, it's safe to fire it up and you're not going to burn anything out by doing so. Once you're done, you're going to line up those two posts in the bottom, lock it into place, and lock it back down with the keyway. Into the back of the unit, you get a black tank flush here, so you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically, it's just some debris inside of the tank hanging between the probes causing that misread, so what you're going to do is take your water hose and plug it into there. Open up the black valve and turn on the water and that'll just flush out that tank, get rid of any sort of debris that could be causing that issue. Left from there, you get your exterior shower, so you'll get a little key just like this guy here. You can stick it on into there and open it up. Hot and cold water with the standard three foot hose and the standard head. All right, so the dog's out getting muddy, you can spray him off before he gets inside. The hose, you're just going to wrap around the knobs, tuck the head back in underneath and lock it back down. Then you get your spare tire back here and straight up from there, you're going to find a pre-wired mount for a rear view or observation camera. So now we'll just make our way inside of the unit here. Your door is on a friction hinge, so it just kind of sits wherever you leave it. If you have it wide open, it does contact your awning arm. So if you're going to be running your awning, you want that door at about 90 degrees or so. For the steps, you're going to pull that left handle in towards the middle and you can plop them on out. For the legs there, you've got that little tab, you press that in, you can extend or retract your legs just based on your campsite needs. those guys out we can make our way inside and first things first right on the right there you get your fire extinguisher so that's standard pull the pinpoint and shoot straight up from it you get a little light switch there's your one little light up front here then over on the opposite wall you get this dimmer switch so as you touch that it turns on all the lights press and hold that'll dim them down continue holding they dim back up and if you just release at any point it'll stay at that light level up from there you get these two light switches on the right so the one on the right there does your awning strip the one on the left does your exterior speakers the awning itself is on this switch here so you press and hold the bottom of that and it makes its way out. So once that awning's fully extended, we're gonna see a little white flap come down as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna to wanna to stop. If you're continuing extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case the fabric will be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So there's our flap, it's just a little sticky today, so we'll go out all the way and then just bring it back in, then it should come down, there we go. Now that fully extended, if it were to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water anyways. So what you're going to do is grab either arm, front or rear, and you just pull straight down on it. Then you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. Now if you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in though, you just want to make sure these guys are back out straight and fully extended, just so we don't run the risk of bending it. Then we'll press and hold the top of that switch and it'll make its way back in. Again, you're just watching that your door's at 90 degrees or so, just so you're not catching that arm. And they're also just making sure that your fabric is over top of the tube. And the last thing to keep in mind with your awning is it does catch a lot of wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. There we go. So straight up from that switch, you get your two red switches there. Water heaters on the right. So as you turn that switch on, it'll fire up on propane. A little light up there will let you know that the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence has started, that light will go out. It'll try that three times. If after the third try it hasn't fired up, that's when you'll be going and using that reset button that we've shown you. So stood right here, you can hear the click of the igniter and the whir of the flame. We know that tank is good. To the left there, you get your water pump. So as you turn that on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Monitor panels up top, so on the left there you get batteries, so you can see you're currently C for charging, G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, will go to a third, two thirds and full, same idea for your black and your gray. Up top you can see our pre-wired for solar, so if you go that route, your charge controller will be mounted right there. And then just into the front bed space there, so you get your USB outlet on either side, and then of course your, or your uh, couch right there as it is. To fold it down, you're going to take the two sides, you're going to move them off to the side, pick up the base and that'll fold it down then you get a travel latch on either side of the bed here pull those in towards the center and then just before I bring it down just take note of that latch right there that hooks onto this lip right there so that's what's going to close or that's what's going to lock it down so once you've got it down your closet space on either side are both identical you can open it up and you get the CPAP access so there is a power outlet in there as well 
like I said, same thing on the other side here. Okay. Once you're done, you're just pulling this trigger on the left side there to unlatch it, and then you pick it straight up, and it folds back away. Make sure you lock it back down with those travel straps, or latches, I mean. And then pick up the base, give the back a little encouragement, which comes right around. And then just take note of that little gap right there. You'll be sliding that in just to kind of lock it into place, just like that. On this side here, you get a little bit of storage, right? That is access straight to that storage compartment to front as well. Same thing over here. Blinds throughout the unit are these slow rise styles. So you pull them down and they sit where kind of wherever you leave them. You just snap them again, they go back up. Emergency exit here, you're pulling that red tab, you get rid of the screen, take this handle there, throw it outside, hop on out. And over on the wall beside it, you can see you get your kind of extendable counter space, so you're just going to lock that up into place. Okay. And then once you're done, just kind of pick up on it, fold those little legs in, and then they'll fold back down. Straight down from there, you get your LP detector, so propane's heavier than air, it sits on the floor. That guy detects it, starts going off just like a smoke detector would. GFI protected outlet up from it, and then into your kitchen here, you get your storage up top. So that binder there has all of your keys, all of your manuals, anything like that for the unit you'll find right in there. Right over top of the sink. Get a little light here, just on its own center push button. Hot and cold water, of course. The sink cover does fold up and it is stainless. So if you need to put something hot on there, you can. Some storage down below, just being mindful of our drains and our water lines over on the right side there. And then your active Susie on this side here. Furnace is right down below that. So the nice thing about this furnace is once it fires up, you'll be able to see that little flame in the bottom left corner. So we'll show you that once it fires up. And then your microwave up top here, it's pretty standard, just like home. Down below that, you get your range vent, you get a light here as well as a fan. So this is that fan that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up when you're running your stove. The bifold cover just flips on back. Then you're gonna push the knob in over to high, hit it with the igniter, and you can see she fires right up. I will just mention that the first time you go to use your propane system, especially if you've been away from the unit for a while, will take a minute to fire up just because it'll have to clear the air out of the propane lines. It's perfectly normal. On the right side here, you get that knob. You can press that and it turns on your stove light as well as your knob lights. And we can open up the oven, press that far right knob into that little flame. That'll turn on your pilot light. And actually, you don't even need a lighter. It's on the igniter here. So you can just turn that and you see she fires right up. Once you get it going, you just hold that knob in for another couple seconds and you can release and the flame will hold itself. Turn up to your desired temperature and she fires right up. If that flame would have stayed. So we'll hold in for a couple seconds and we can release, that flame holds itself. Turn up to your desired temperature and there you go. Once you're done, you can turn it back down just to pile it. Once you're done, you're just going to want to make sure that's right off though. Down below that, just kind of an uh, access panel to, I believe, your water pump. 12 volt fridge here, so as long as you're plugged in this bat or with your batteries charged or charging, this guy's going for you. All right, freezer in the bottom, or sorry, freezer in the top, fridge in the bottom. Down below that way, converter, press the top and center and it pops on open. You get all of your breakers in the middle there. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the center, so just turn it off and then back on to reset it. On the right side, you get all of your fuses. Whenever a fuse pops, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. Storage over top of your dinettes here. Right. Smoke detector on the right side. There we go. You can run cables through all of there to get access to, I assume, the cable and satellite outlets. Over top of the dinette here, you get a little light. And then on the left side, you get your stereo. So the power button there is going to turn it on. And then you can get all your sources across the top there. So we'll hit AM, FM to get through all of your bands. USB is right in the front here. Bluetooth, connect to your phone. You can hit source to get through everything else. If you press and hold, hold source, it'll get turned to all of your settings. Right. If you press the power button there, that mutes it. Press and hold to turn it off. And then all your presets across the bottom there. The dinette's here. Basically, you got this table here. You're gonna wiggle that up out of its legs. And then you can basically do the same thing with your legs out of their bases. And then you're going to take the table and lay it down onto the two ledges there that you'll get. And then you can take the back cushions to fill in the center. You can also take just the back cushions and fill in that middle there and create kind of what they call like a chase lounge bed type deal. This window here is actually exactly how I want to point it out. So that happens all too often where someone thinks that's closed. But if you look at the end here, that is not closed at all. You don't have the seals compressed. 
So slam that, close it, make sure that that latch actually sits inside of that rib there. If you have it, you can have it on it, in which case you just push it out and you create a leak right here as well as at the end. So you wanna make sure that is completely closed. Thermostat here, so you press that bottom bar to wake it up, hit it again, it'll come into fan low. So fan low is just gonna move, the, move some air around, there's no cooling involved, just the low fan. And then high fan, same idea, just moving air. After that, it'll come into cool high. Cool high is gonna have the compressor cut in and out as needed, leaving the high fan on all the time. Same idea in cool low, low fan all the time, compressor in and out as needed. After cool low, it'll come into cool low auto. So at this point, it becomes an on-demand system where both the fan and the compressor will cut in and out as needed. After that, you can get into cool high auto. So the difference between cool high auto and cool low auto is really just the fan speed that it runs. They're both on demand. With the air conditioner going, you basically got two different options. You got the two louvers there, you can open them up and it dumps all of its air into the living room here. So when you first get out to your campsite, you want those open. And once you have this area cooled off, you can close them off and start moving the air through all of your ducts. And then after cool high auto, if we hit that bar again, it'll come down into heat. We'll turn off the air conditioner and turn on the furnace. And like I said, once that furnace gets going, you'll see in the bottom left corner that little flame. And then just the downside to this furnace is that it is not ducted, so it is just outletting all of its air right here. So if you're looking to move the air forward and back throughout the unit, you just don't want to get yourself a little fan or something. So you can see that little flame down in the corner there. And there we go. After heat, you hit that bar again, it'll come down into off, and then it just cycles back around. Temp selection at any point is just with your arrows there. And now into the bathroom back here. So right on the left, you get your light switch there. And you get your kind of closet space in the back. Straight up from there, you're going to find a roof vent. So just turn that knob to open it up. In the back corner, you get the switch, turn on the fan. Toilet here. So as you flop that up, you get the little flusher on the right side here. GFI protected outlet in the back wall. So test on the bottom, reset on top. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Your medicine cabinet here. So you just get open that up. Take note of that little tongue right there. Just holds on to this little elastic on the side that I can't grab. There we go. Just holds onto that as kind of your travel strap. Just holds it closed for you. Down below that, you get your hot and cold water at the sink, of course. A little bit of storage down below. Just be mindful of our drains and our water lines. And then right behind me, we've got your shower. So basically, you get your travel strap there. You just gonna kind of pull that back. And you can open it up. You get hot and cold water, standard head and hose. Simple as that. To relatch, you're just gonna to want to kind of close it real hard, and then you can pull that strap over it. And there you go. Get your bed of storage in the back corner here as well. And so that is about it for this unit. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.